What's up Lash Fam? Welcome back to my channel guys. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on volume lashing. I have done one of these before, but today I'm going to do one using my .05s. I am doing 16mm and I'm mixing that with 13mm as well because she has a little bit shorter ones in between. So we're going to jump into the video. Hope you guys like it. Alright Lash Fam, so I get a lot of questions on how I cut my foam tape for my under eye pads. This is how I do it. It's super simple. You just cut along with curved eyebrow tweezers and it naturally does a curve for you. It's amazing. I like to place um, my tape pretty close to the lash line. We don't want it to go into their eye, but I like to get it pretty close and then I always adjust after the client closes their eyes. Pull down those outer corners, make sure that all of those little baby lashes are covered and then we always ask our client if they're comfortable if they feel anything in their eye this tape is great it doesn't move it's very good so here i'm using lash box la primer which is a great primer love it we're gonna coat those entire lashes before we get them going and i did not wash her lashes prior to this we're just gonna prime. So we make sure that we get them all covered in that primer. And then we're using my Luminous Bond Adhesive, which is great for higher humidities, which I have here. And I always like to add two drops to my glue ring just so I have a lot of glue in there. And then I'm using my 0.5's DD Curl in 16 and 13. And I'm gonna add a little bit of glue aid onto those lashes before I start using them. So here, what I'm gonna do is, if you're following along, um, super simple, we're not lash mapping just because it's an easy, easy map. What I'm doing is I'm applying 16 mm throughout her entire lash line onto her long lashes. Now this client has short lashes in between those long lashes, so if you have a client like that also, you want to add in the length on those longer ones. So we're adding 16 mm to all those long lashes, getting as much coverage as possible with the longer lengths, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add in those shorter lashes so then we're going to go in with our 13 mm's and add those in throughout the lash line super simple mapping i love this look it shows dimension it just gives good coverage and you're also getting length while you're also on top of that getting a lot of coverage so this is such a good map you guys can also use this map when we're using these longer lengths like 16 15 17 things like that we want to make sure that we're only applying those to the longer lashes now, if you over time apply long lashes like that to short natural lashes, that is where the damage can be caused. So we wanna always make sure that we're going three millimeters longer than the natural lash, and we wanna stick with that formula and kind of follow that guideline a little bit. But you can kind of create your own look just depending on the client's natural lash. So on this client, we definitely wanted, she wanted long lashes. so. We went ahead and did 16s as our longest ones and then just added those 13s in, super simple. Um, and I here am doing the underneath technique, applying underneath the natural lash, which as you guys know is definitely my favorite method when it comes to applying extensions onto the natural lash just because for me, I have the best retention results that way. And I also think that the extension holds great onto the natural lash when it's applied underneath. Um, and of course, I'm using my pinky technique, which again, we teach in our courses. If you guys are interested in taking a lash course, you can definitely always email me about that. Um, but the pinky technique is used just to help isolate better. Isolation is obviously a huge, huge um, step in the application process. So we wanna master that as much as possible. Um, so I am 100% focusing on my isolation, on my fans, on my bases, things like that. Um, and a lot of people get nervous when they're doing sets because they don't feel like they're getting enough coverage. So I encourage you guys to lash 100% on the natural lashes as, as often as you can. Um, when you are, I guess, have time for it, go ahead and try and do that. You will achieve such a different look. Um, so that is what we are doing here. We are going to lash 100% of those natural lashes. and. This map is super simple, anyone can do it. I encourage you guys to do it. If you do it, make sure you guys tag me in that work. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this map, if you're gonna try this map, things like that. Um, I encourage you guys just to kind of play around with maps and do fun things. So as you can see here, she has super long ones. 
and then in between if you can kind of see there's shorter ones in there so right now I am still just applying those 16 mm's to those super long lashes she has. always lash one eye at a time yes I lash one eye at a time the reason I do this is because for me it's a focus thing I like to focus just on one eye at a time so I like to do one eye again preference you guys can alternate you guys can go back and forth one eye at a time it doesn't matter as long as you are doing your best work that's all that matters we just want to make sure that the client is getting top-notch service always so it doesn't matter how you apply and there's no right or wrong um, some people just like to do it one way or the other. Also, I don't know if you can tell in this video, the client is talking a lot. So you can notice a little bit that when the client talks, laughs, you know, things like that moves, it does make it a little bit harder to apply eyelash extensions. And I don't know if you can tell much in the video, but you do see a lot of movement. So I encourage you guys to just have your client be as calm, quiet as possible. It will help your lashing process go a little bit smoother. Now the dip method on this, when I use my glue ring, um, I only dip into the front and I, I dip it all the way in but then I swipe the back of the glue off on the rim of the glue ring. This helps the glue only to be on the front of the extension so when I'm applying the glue underneath, the glue is only on one side. Um, it helps avoid stickies, it just helps um, with the weight of the lash as well. We don't want too much weight on the fan, um, that just causes a little bit more that we don't want on there. We want to keep it as light as possible, so the less glue, the actually the better. Here I'm making my fans, you guys. I like wide fans, that gives so much better coverage, and I am using my 35 degree angle tweezers. Those are also available on our website, so you guys can grab those still. 45 degree tweezers always sell out super quick for those. We'll be back soon. Be on the lookout for those. I love this angle. You guys can see it so well. I do get very close to the lash line. Now, don't worry, I do not touch that lash line, but I do get very close. Um, the reason why I get close to the lash line is because it shows great coverage. If we are too far off, too far um, high up from the lash line then it looks like a messy set so definitely try to get as close to the lash line as possible so now i'm getting my inner corners which are the hardest part to get for most lash artists um, i encourage you to use this tape method which what i do is i like to lash as much of the eye as possible besides the inner corners so go ahead and lash from the middle to the end once you have lashed all of that or about 90 or 80% of that, you wanna tape aside all of those lashes so that those lashes are no longer in the way. What it does is it pulls the inner corners out and it allows you to see anything that you haven't gotten throughout the rest of the eyes. So you can see in the middle and towards the end, there still are lashes that are not lashed. What I'm doing though is I'm focusing on just those inner corners first and then I will move along and get those other ones that I haven't gotten throughout the entire lash line. This tape method will help you tremendously to get all of those extra little lashes that you see here in the inner corner they are harder to get when the lashes are fully exposed so use your tape to your advantage it is there to help you guys remember to detack your tape always detack your tape prior to putting it onto the extensions if you don't as most of you know it will pull the extensions out you have already done and we don't want that to happen so detack first then go in place it on there and you can add more tape on there you can take it off put it back on as you go and kind of just keep pulling away those lashes that you've lashed exposing the ones that are not already lashed um, and this is a great technique i use this each time i do my inner corners again she has some pretty long ones in those inner corners so i'm applying 16s to only the long ones and then i'm going to go in with the 13s and fill that in 
to all of her shorter, littler ones. Um, this will help give a lot more dense look into those inner corners because sometimes when you apply too much length, it gives length and not density. So we want both. That's why we're mixing the two. So as you can see, I swipe that glue and that's an important technique that you want to try and implement into your sets to kind of help you um, have a little bit more consistency, um, less stickies, things like that. We want to get all those little ones. Um, I know it's really hard to get the inner and outer corners 100% completely lashed, but if you can focus and take a couple clients and just focus on doing that, you will see a huge difference in your set. So I encourage you guys to kind of take an extra hour or so and just try and get as much coverage done on the eye as possible so you guys can see those final results so you guys can see you know what a full 100% lashed eye looks like and I think you guys will be really inspired to try and keep doing that in your sets a lot of people ask me um, how my sets look so dark so full that's my secret you guys so we're gonna remove the tape slowly gently always give them a good brush I like to do this brush the lashes maybe two or three times throughout the set gives me a little better of a view of what needs to be lashed so I like to brush them out real good make sure none are stuck together and then I go ahead and tape it back again now this time I tape it up and what the up taping does is it exposes all, all the little ones now these are all gonna get 13s now you can see some of these are lifting I'm gonna remove those and add them on again sometimes they lift a little bit at the base which we don't want so this technique also helps expose things like this that happen throughout a set that we don't want so i'll go ahead and remove those um, and apply new ones on there and make sure that they're on there nice and good now if you use this technique if you use the taping technique drop a comment give this video a big thumbs up i want to know who else uses this technique and implements this into their sets um, I don't know that it's implemented a lot. That's why I like to talk about it because it is a huge help to a lot of lash artists to be able to use tape and help expose those little lashes, those different layers, things like that. This technique is my go-to. I have to have tape in all of my sets. It just makes a huge difference. So here you can really tell um, when the client talks because you can see her eye kind of wink, kind of open, close, things like that which definitely makes it a lot harder. It causes for those things to lift um, when applying them because they don't attach the right way that they're supposed to be. So definitely, um, this is a good example of what talking is like for lash artists. So if anyone here is a client watching or if you are a new lash artist and you're wondering if you're struggling with your sets because you know, you're talking to your clients a lot and you're not getting good, um, you know, getting good placement, it might be the talking. So you might want to just cut the talking a little bit. So here I'm going to remove that one because that one came off. We don't want that. All right. So this is how I do my sets step by step. Um, step one, obviously you're going to prime, put the iPads on. Step two, get your glue, get your glue weight if you use it, which I recommend you guys use it, um, things like that and then you're just gonna start lashing and this is how I do it. And I don't, um, I don't lash map on the actual pad anymore. I just go for it and just kind of create. And then you always wanna give your eye a good blow dry, make sure that no fumes are still drying before the client opens their eye, brush those lashes out. Super excited for you guys to see this final look. Definitely one of my favorites. All right, Lash Fam, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, join the Lash Family. I am launching my 0.3 mixed trays again. Those are restocking end of this month. I will also be in LA holding an advanced volume class. 
Um, so if you're interested in that, I will be there October 12th. Make sure to send me a DM. I will get you that information so you can join me in that class. So it will be a small group class, about 10 max. Um, so I'm excited about that. Hope to see some of you guys there. You can drop a comment down below if you're interested in that and I will get you the information on that as well. So we will be restocking our 45 degree volume tweezers. Those will be back in just a few weeks. So be on the lookout for those. We carry them in matte and gloss. Um, they always sell out super quick. So make sure you guys grab them as soon as they are available. And that is it, Lash Fam. I will see you guys soon for another video.